Hey everybody, it's Ripley again. Hopefully you've watched my uh, videos on f of theta equals sine theta and f of theta equals cos theta because that's going to make f of theta equal tan theta a heck of a lot easier to deal with. i got to tweak my pen here real quick. Let's grab this. Sorry about the interruption there. Okay, now hopefully you remember that tan theta is really y over x. So I'm going to add that in here because I don't know that we've beat that drum enough. So tan of theta is y over x. So what we're doing is we're taking the ratio of the y value to the x value. y value to the x value, y to the x, y to the x, and y to the x. Okay? Now, again, I'm going to use the applet to show you how this guy works, and I think that'll give you guys a lot of understanding with that. So let me drop this down real quick. This was our cos theta. This was our sine theta. You're going to want to memorize these home graphs. I do like that this applet just gives you the home graphs because it'll sort of indelibly implant uh, the, the, the home, what I refer to as mother graphs of those. Okay, so here comes tangent. All right, now this one's crazy. And I'm going to clear this one up a little bit more for you when we, when we go back over to the, to the tablet. Okay, so remember, we're doing y over x. Since this is the point, remember tangent is, in this case, the green divided by the blue, the y divided by the x, and this is the point 1 comma 0. 1 comma 0 is going to, the ratio of y to x is 0 to 1. Now, I'm going to toggle back and forth here real quick. So look close. If I start at 1 comma 0, I know that the tangent of 0 is going to be 0 divided by 1, which is 0. At pi force, notice what happens. I know that y and x are exactly the same thing, so the ratio is going to be 1. And you'll see that happen on here, right there at pi force. And I, I can't get perfectly in here at pi force, but it does allow me to get pretty close. Look at that. So that corresponds. Here's pi force. That gets me up here to the point comma 1. Remember, this, this purple here is the ratio. Notice it does a really nice job of saying, uh, y, in this case, V over U, which is really Y over X. I don't really know why they do that, but it is what it is. All right, now, as I head through the first quadrant, look at this. Look at what's going on here. I love this purple line. It demonstrates how long. These are the same length. It's so cool. I know that this goes to the point 0, 1. So back over here. If I'm at 0, 1, then I'm taking the number 1 and dividing it by 0 which, as you can probably guess, goes to infinity as I get really, really close to it. Now, something magic happens here. We've got to talk about why this happens. Right, over here in the second quadrant, remember, all students take calculus is the mnemonic that we use. In the second quadrant, I know that tangent is negative because the y values are positive, but the x values are negative. So across pi halves, all of a sudden my tangent just flips and down it goes here. And as we go through the second quadrant, look at what happens. I get over here to negative 1 comma 0, which is going to give me a value of 0, because I've got 0 divided by negative 1, which is 0. And then through the third quadrant, all students take, now I'm in tangent land, so I know that this is going to be um, positive, excuse me, because both x and y are negative, and a negative divided by a negative is positive. And then when I get to 0, comma 1, or negative 1, excuse me, I know that negative 1 divided by 0 um, is a bad thing, which is infinity, and then it skips again. In the second quadrant, it skips negative, because in the f I'm sorry, in the fourth quadrant, it skips negative. In the fourth quadrant, x is positive, but y is negative. So a negative divided by a positive is negative. And then we head back for 2 pi, and bam, we're right back where we started. All right, now let's explain what's going on one more time. All right, through the first quadrant, I know that both x and y are positive, and as we head for 0, 1, we're going to head for positive infinity. So through the first quadrant, since x and y are positive, I know that tangent is positive. Bam, it gets me there. All of a sudden, we're in the second quadrant. Second quadrant, x is negative and y is positive. So those, that's where my negative values are coming from. And I actually come out of negative infinity. We're not afraid of this sort of asymptotic behavior. We've seen it before with our rational functions. All right, so here we go. Second quadrant gets me back to negative 1 comma 0, which 0 divided by negative 1 is 0. Now we're in the third quadrant. Tangent's going to be positive in the third quadrant, so we're off to the races. And then when I hit 
0 comma negative 1, all hell breaks loose, and I head up to, to infinity. And then through the fourth quadrant, x is positive, y is negative, I stay negative. And I hit, and as you can well imagine, I'm going to repeat myself. And I'm going to repeat myself now. Well, let's go back. It's easier to see on the bamboo. All right, so let's give ourselves a little bit more space here. Check this out. What did you notice? Hopefully you noticed that I definitely repeat myself every 2 pi. There's no doubt about that. So I go like this at pi. Remember what that looked like? We got, let me get all these on here first before we get too crazy. At 3 pi halves. At pi halves, because I went through the point 0, comma 1, and at 3 pi halves, because I went through the point 0, comma negative 1, I had asymptotic behaviors. So what ended up happening was, whoops, what ended up happening was I got something that looked like this. I apologize for my terrible handwriting, right? However, this thing repeats itself. Notice that if I go over here to negative pi halves, so this is negative pi halves, this thing is going to go ooh, just like that, badly drawn. Oh, I'm sorry, you guys, badly drawn. Also, if I add pi, notice that this thing happens every pi, this repetition, what we will refer to as periodicity or the period of tangent is pi. It repeats itself every pi. So if I add pi over here, I'm going to get to 5 pi halves, and it's going to go just like that. If I subtract pi more, I'm going to get to negative 3 pi halves. Let's see, i got to make sure my width is about right. Negative 3 pi halves. And I get another one of these guys. Look at that. And this right here, the, <clears throat> excuse me, this right here is going to happen at negative pi, this 0, which makes sense. If I go negative pi, I still get to the point negative 1 comma 0. All right, so for f of theta, equals tangent of theta. Let's talk about the domain and let's talk about the range because this is interesting. Let's talk about the range first. Since range is the set of y values that the function <clears throat> spits out, it should be relatively obvious that uh, my function goes from negative infinity to infinity around these asymptotes, which cleans up my range rather nicely for me. I like that. But let's talk about the domain, because this is going to be fancy. <clears throat> the domain for tangent is all reals, except at these values where I have asymptotes. Now, it's really difficult to write out the domain of tangent in terms of where tangent exists. It's easier to exclude the values that we're not allowed to use. Now, I'm going to use a notation here that you may or may not have seen. Um, and it's simply, I'm going to watch what I do. I just remove it. I'm going to say pi halves. I know for sure, whoops, hold on. I know for sure that theta cannot be, so we're going to say, if I want to be really fancy and I want to do this in set builder notation, because interval notation doesn't make a whole lot of sense, because I'd have to put together a, a countably infinite number of infinite sets, and I don't want to do that. Um, I'm going to say the set of all theta such that theta cannot be. All right, that's weird to say, here are the thetas, however, I'm talking about the thetas that aren't allowed to be, but I'm going to take out the one that I know can exist, which is pi halves, and then notice that it repeats itself every pi. So the way that I deal with that is I write pi k, where, now here's the fun part, where k is an element of the integers. So check it out. If k is 1, I know that pi halves plus pi, so for k equals 1, pi halves plus pi is 3 pi halves. And that right there is that, is that value, whoops, try that again, that right there, sorry about that you guys, is that value. If k equals negative 1, then that's going to be pi halves minus pi, which is negative pi halves, which is that asymptote right there. If I let k equal 2, then pi halves plus 2 pi is equal to 5 pi halves. And that is that asymptote right there, which I'm not allowed to have. And you can explore that on your own. Please go back and visit that applet to get those, these mother graphs of tangent sort of imprinted on your brain. I want you to see at least two periods of the mother graph of the tangent.
All right. Have a great day, and I'll see you in class tomorrow.